Okay, so the meeting has officially started. We are recording. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'll introduce David Nosnick first. Um, David's been working with the chamber since March. He joined the chamber in October of 2019, about two weeks after I did, and uh, as a member. And he was um, he joined our board of directors in March of 2020 as our treasurer. And uh, has been helping us get our books in order ever since. So as I said, you'll see, and put, not, not putting any pressure on you, David, but David is the only CPA I ever met who can, who's actually funny. Yeah. So I will let David introduce himself first, and then we'll just do a quick go around the room so David knows who you all are. Okay, wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. And um, yet yeah, I am David Nosnik. I am a CPA. I am the treasurer of the chamber. And I'm also the chair of the membership committee. So double welcome to everybody. Um, um, I really think I'm one of the few people on earth that actually loves accounting. So one of, the, uh, one of my goals in this four part seminar is to at least the first one to get you not to hate accounting so much. And maybe by the fourth one, you will start in entertaining the idea of maybe liking accounting. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure for me to um, join and be able to share with you. I think that uh, in my firm, we do things a little bit different and have proven over the years to be very helpful for the small business. Um, I've had a lot of experience with big firms. I was a partner at Deloitte, one of the large accounting firms. I've done a lot of entrepreneurial. I've done a lot of things, both private and public accounting. And about uh, seven years ago, supposedly I was going to retire. Uh, it lasted a week. My wife said, you got to do something. Otherwise it won't work. So what I did for retirement is I started a small accounting firm. And the focus is um, the small business. I felt that the small business was not getting the benefits of the uh, incredible breakthroughs in, in uh, technology. And um, I realized that uh, today technology, especially in the area of management, accounting, um, is so accessible, so cheap. So that's the focus of my firm, is bringing high-tech, high-quality technology in a very simple, very inexpensive way to the small business. And one of the key tools is QuickBooks Online. So I'll be very happy to uh, share with you why I think this could work real well for you and entertain all the um, questions you, you all have. So with that, I will then let uh, Alice introduce everybody else. Okay, thanks, David. And I'm, we're all set to screen share. Um, so we're set up for, with that. So you can go ahead and take care of that as soon as you're ready. Uh, so um, I'm just going to call out your name in order of how you're appearing on my screen and just ask you to unmute yourself and introduce yourself and, and let David know what kind of business you represent. So David, you're up first. Me? No, uh, David Weir. I'm the director of the Agunquit Memorial Library. And uh, I only know David uh, Nosnick through his donations to the library. Thank you very much, David. You bet. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so I'd like to learn about QuickBooks and I'm actually working with our consortium. They're going to give me some assistance too because they have some actual experience uh, setting up uh, QuickBooks with libraries, but I'm glad to have this introduction. Thank you. Okay, and Eileen, you're up next. Hi, um, I'm Eileen Con Conlon. I uh, own the tea space on Main Street in Agonquit. And um, yeah, I'm a small business. I've been in business for, I think, around five years now. And I have a, a bookkeeper accountant who takes care of my financial stuff because I'm one of those people that hates uh, accounting and numbers. But he uses this, so I thought it would be good for me to understand what he was using. <laughs> Very Thank good. You. I, I think you also have benefit from my membership, but from my uh, contributions, Eileen. We love your store. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and last but not least, Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Grimes. I'm with Garnsey Brothers Rentals. Uh, we actually manage the Ocean Dunes 
it's a motel, but it's called a motel, but technically it's condominiums down on Moody Beach. I use QuickBooks Desktop. Um, not that I'm great at it, but that's what I use. Okay. Very good. Well, excellent. Uh, and if I may, let me let me get started. Um, the uh, you know I just wanted very briefly to share with you why um, you know accounting as a diff as a separate language, but the language of business is really very important. And um, the problem is that most small businesses don't really appreciate mainly because they have not really been introduced to how to in a very practical way use financial statements for their benefit um the a proper accounting system will give you reports financial statements balance sheet income statement uh, many more that really tell the story the story of your business uh, and not only where it, the business has been, what opportunities you've pursued, what mistakes you've made, uh, how much it cost you, but more importantly, it really helps you understand your business in a way that you would be surprised. Uh, and not only that, by understanding it and keeping a discipline, keeping good books on a timely basis, not only during tax time only, but really on a timely basis, you will understand so much more and you will be able to look ahead. You will be able to predict the next six weeks. What's the cash flow going to look like in the next six weeks? Um, what am I going to be at the end of a year? Um, interaction of budgets versus actual, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that, for me, the most important thing about accounting and a good accounting system is that it's going to be able to have you look ahead and avoid surprises. I think that if I had to say what's the number one objective accounting is avoid surprises and help you make better decisions. With good information on your hands, the risk associated with any decision should I open? Should I buy? What inventory? <clears throat> what books to get? Et cetera. The risk is reduced. So having said that, um, having a very, and by the way, if you have any questions at any point, just, I guess you raise the hand or let us know and we'll interrupt and, and go ahead and do it. Um, having said, you know, what I just said about accounting, an accounting system, I believe, well, the two challenges for a small business owner, uh, for the manager of a small business, there's two challenges of um, keeping uh, good, timely, accurate books. One is time. It just takes too much time away from the things that bring the money, from managing the business. And second, lack of knowledge. Um, who on the right mind would take accounting in undergrad? Only accountants. And that's why typically the solution for a good accounting system for a small business owner, for a small business manager is number one, the checkbook. You would be surprised how many businesses, and maybe you all do, rely mainly on their checkbook as their one and only accounting system. Well, that's a very, very dangerous situation. It puts the, uh, the business, no matter what the business is, in a very vulnerable situation. Um, for those that decide, no, 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 I'm going to invest in accounting system, typically the next step is what um, Eileen is doing, which is they go for a bookkeeper. Um, a bookkeeper traditionally has been typically the best solution. Um, some are getting a little expensive. Most are very uh, accessible. It's certainly cheaper than a CPA. And um, the challenge is that in general, bookkeepers are uh, very narrow-minded. They know bookkeeping, they do bookkeeping, and they do it this way. Typically, even with a bookkeeper, 
the owner feels that they're spending so much time putting together the, the, the paperwork necessary to give it to the bookkeeper or the bookkeeper comes and picks it up. And it takes a week or two before they produce the, 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 the statements. And the statements are done this way because that's the way they are. And here they are once a month, hopefully, they're presented to the owner. And like Eileen said, I have no idea what they're doing. I know that here they are, the financial statements, but I don't like numbers. Uh, and by the way, accounting is beyond numbers. Numbers is just, uh, it's just the, the, the tool of the accountant, if you wish. So what to do? You know, um, am I going to hire a, a CPA? I mean, it's, that's, 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 that's a non-starter. What we have done um, about five, six years ago, and because of the, um, of the um, uh, ability of QuickBooks Online, uh, Kevin, not the desktop version, but really the, uh, the QuickBooks Online version, because it's accessible from anywhere where you have access to the internet and you can share it, many users, can access the books at the same time, no matter where in the world they are, the relationship that an accountant can have with the, um, with the business is one that I have found uh, QuickBooks Online provides you. And for me, that is the best solution. Um, and I will explain to you, it's, it's a step beyond bookkeeping. I call it supervised bookkeeping. And I will explain to you, you know, how that will provide you with great accounting system, providing you great information on a timely basis. You're going to spend less time producing it and the quality is going to improve. And that at the cornerstone of it is QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online is very easy to use, especially by non-accountants. In our solution, which is the supervised bookkeeping, typically involves one person at our client. And that person typically is a non-accountant, typically very reluctant to take on the role of bookkeeper within the company. However, the only thing we need really is someone who's smart and who's got you know, a good work ethic. They typically, depending upon the business, are going to spend probably four to six hours a week doing books with QuickBooks Online, okay? And I'm, I will explain more about the system. And you say, what, four to six hours? You know, how can that give you timely and better systems? That is what I'm going to show you throughout this, this series. So QuickBooks Online, it's very easy to use, especially non-accountants. It's very intuitive. When you go to the portal, you kind of know what to do, where to go to find what you need to do. Also, uh, the technology of QuickBooks Online, because it's online, because it's what they call software as a service. If you have any questions, typically you can click somewhere and you can get a very brief description of what you need to do. Or in the case of supervised accounting, supervised bookkeeping, the way we do it in my firm, you can just call my office and we can be looking at the same application at the same time. We're all looking at the books and we say, no, what you need to do is this, what you need to do is that. That way, your bookkeeper, your employee who's doing the, the bookkeeping for four to six hours feels that it doesn't matter. They can make a mistake because we know that my CPA's office has our back. Okay, they are going to be looking after us. So it's very intuitive, it's very portable. You can actually do your accounting at the beach if you find the parking space, right? And then it's also very flexible. It's good for a pizza restaurant, for a tea store. You're gonna find it, David, that it's incredibly uh, great for, for, a, um, for a bookstore, for a library, um, it, it, it's, it's for, for um, a condominium, for instance, one of my clients is a condominium association. I mean, it's very flexible for two reasons. 
in itself, the chart of accounts, as we're going to see, can be custom to whatever business you have. But also, because it's, um, it's online, and because there are more than 4 million people right now using QuickBooks Online throughout the world, they have developed an aftermarket. There is a lot of companies that have developed special applications that can be integrated with QuickBooks. And seamlessly, uh, if you want to have a heavy duty inventory application and QuickBooks into it, which is the software developer, if they have not developed it, there might be Sage, there might be other accounting systems or other companies, um, software companies that say, hey, there's 4 million. Of those 4 million, a million two are manufacturers. I think we're going to develop an incredible application that is going to be um, integrated into QuickBooks. So because of that, because of the flexibility of QuickBooks itself, and because of the uh, market for applications, which we will also go through this uh, webinar, it makes it for a very powerful uh, solution. In my view, it's actually the, uh, the most economical solution for a heavy duty um, uh, accounting system. Now, Kevin, you are, doing, you are using the um, um, QuickBooks desktop. And many people say, well, QuickBooks Online is just the online version of the desktop. Actually, that was the case many years ago when QuickBooks decided that they were going to expand their desktop version <clears throat> into online. You know, that was the trend. That's the way they were going to go. Well, now, actually, after many, many years, the technology available through online, the uh, technology available on the cloud is so powerful that the two are really now two different products. I mean, the capabilities and the ease of use and just the beauty of the portal of the um, QuickBooks Online leaves, in my view, the desktop way behind. Um, about five or six years ago, we were doing a lot of um, our a lot of our clients, if not most of them, were using desktop versions, and for many years we were working with them. When I when I realized the beauty of QuickBooks Online, it took me two years. But after two years, uh, basically I said we will not take any client that uh, will not be using QuickBooks Online. We have become so, it, 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 you become so adept, so good at that system that you cannot be offering, you know, multiple systems because then you become really bad at many systems in, instead of really being good. Uh, and, and going back and looking at um, uh, some of the uh, QuickBooks desktop versions, including the one at the chamber, gives me a big, big headache. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we've been trying to move to online and, and we will, when we have a little time, um, it just, I mean, you know, what we do at the chamber and right now we have an excellent system. Before that, um, we had books, but the books, I you know, told a story that wasn't our story. I don't know whose story it was, uh, but now we do have the desktop. It's being run by someone who's not doesn't have an accounting background but then we added a bookkeeper to do the supervision so it's a little cumbersome but it's kind of following you know my philosophy i mean what we really would love to have is move full time to to online so um that is basically you know the why we are using uh, quickbooks online that's why uh, excuse me. That's why we, um, I'm sorry, the system is, I don't know if you hear the phone, but you know, if not, that's fine. Um, that's why, you know, I truly feel that QuickBooks Online is the best solution and it's the most economical solution. Basically, a uh, QuickBooks Online subscription, you pay on, on a monthly basis, the one I recommend is the um, QuickBooks Online uh, Plus, and that subscription is $80 a month. 
I think they tell you it's 40 for three months. It's $80 a month and it's well worth it. Um, and when we provide the service, what we do is we provide what I, what I told you is a supervised bookkeeping. And you can do it with your bookkeeper. You can do it with, with your accountant. The whole concept is uh, we train. If, if, if someone is going to be new at, at QuickBooks Online, we train. We have a training that takes one day. And within one day, they can start writing checks. They can start uh, making deposits. They can start connecting their financial accounts directly to the bank. We've gone through all the steps throughout the, the seminar. But then within one day, they're operating. And see, the beauty of QuickBooks, as you know also, but Kevin, also the same thing in desktop, you write a check and it looks on the screen just like a check. You already posted the transaction to the books. You make a deposit, it's already on the books. So once uh, you know, we train someone the first day, they really are adept to start doing it. Then what we do is every, uh, with QuickBooks Online, remember, we have access 24 hours, seven days um, a week, you know, to, to the same books that you do. And you can give access to the boss, to the manager. So people can go and look at the information on a real time. What we do is once a week, we take a look at the books, we see what you've done. If there's any questions that we have, why did you do this? Did you mean to do that? So we keep the quality high. We send emails, we get responses. By the same token, if the bookkeeper has any question, what do I do with this one? They can send emails, they can call during the day. They know they have the interaction. And then once a month, we actually hold a Zoom meeting to review the financial statements for that month. And then once, a, uh, once every three months, we make a financial presentation to the owner, to the manager, what happened, compare it to budget. And what that does, it provides the, the, the manager, the owner, an idea of how did we do and where are we going? Uh, that's what we call supervised uh, bookkeeping. And um, in our case, we charge $80 a month because what we have found is that after two months, the calls, you know, trickle down to almost nothing. So really we're meeting once a month and we're meeting once a quarter. And um, the quality goes up, the um, assurance, I mean, the bookkeeper knows and feels very comfortable. It's not the feeling of, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not really an accountant. I don't like numbers. No, but I know that the accountants are behind, they're looking at it. And what I would suggest, if I can convince you QuickBooks Online is the best solution, talk to your uh, bookkeeper, talk to your accountant and say, could we try something like this? Or maybe a, something that, you know, it's a little bit different. Maybe your bookkeeper says, well, we'll try QuickBooks Online. If, they, if she's already doing it, great. If he doesn't, maybe you say, well, can we try? So that you have access. The problem with the, with the outside, with the farming out the, the statements to a bookkeeper, to an accountant, is that the decisions are being made in-house and the person who's recording them is not there. Um, also, when that person provides the statements, they're not as meaningful because they're not part of the decision-making. Whereas with QuickBooks Online, it brings everybody under one umbrella um, and, and, and you would see the difference is, is, is really incredible. Any questions so far? Anybody has any comments or questions? Mike, uh, welcome. So Mike, Mike, if you want to unmute yourself and just let David know who you are and what business you own, that would be awesome. Yeah, so uh, I'm Mike Cavaretta. I'm with uh, Cornerstone. Um, and um, I, I actually have QuickBooks online. So I, I was just sort of listening in to see if there's any pointers or anything like that that I can kind of pick up on. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Stay stay for a little while. We'll give you more. <laughs> and by the way, Mike, if there is anything specific that you've been having problems with, oh, in general, I want to share with you that uh, we also, every Friday, we open up basically the office virtually. Um, and we have a clinic every Friday. Um, clients, in this case, you guys, um, chamber uh, members, you can send me an email and say, you know, I really would like, we spend 15 minutes one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Zoom, 
um, dealing with some specific question you may have or you know any ideas you have any way we can help you uh, and again it's up, it's open to you know anybody um, you don't have to be a client of the firm just you know let us know especially if you're a member of the chamber that's Fridays anytime so during the week if you want to just send a, an email um, uh, and uh, we'll give you the information so you know we offer that service as well um, we if there's no other questions, what I would like to do now is uh, go and move on to the first. Let me tell you briefly what we're going to be covering in the in the uh, four uh, workshops. The first one today, we are going to be covering the portal, uh, QuickBooks Online, when you land, how to navigate. And that pretty much is going to give you a bird's eye view of all the capabilities of QuickBooks Online. We're not going into any details, but we're showing you how easy it is to navigate, how easy it is to find what you're looking for, and more importantly, how easy it is to uh, post, how easy it is to actually do the accounting in the, um, in the cloud, in the online environment. Um, and we are going to, today, we're gonna to start by recording expenses and how to write checks <clears throat> then during the second webinar and <clears throat> Alice when are we going to have the second webinar <clears throat> is the it in second two weeks? One, it's every other week so um okay it's February 24th and then March 10th and March 24th okay now <clears throat> all of the seminars are being recorded so you know if you you cannot make to the second one but you want to see it you know right after it it's, it's going to be posted to the, um, <clears throat> to the Chamber's YouTube uh, channel. And also, I'm going to be posting it in my website. My website is nosnik, my last name, N-O-S-N-I-K.com. And you can go and see that and other tutorials that I have posted online. During the second webinar, what we're going to do is um, connect your checking accounts, savings accounts, credit accounts, all of your financial accounts directly with QuickBooks Online. Um, if you can, don't miss that second webinar because that's really at the core. QuickBooks Online has introduced artificial intelligence to the bookkeeping function. And by connecting your checking account, savings account, mortgage, line of credit, directly to your bank, every night, the uh, system, QuickBooks Online, will bring down the transactions that clear the bank that day. And they will put him into a lobby that's called banking for you to look at him in the morning and say, yep. And the, the system will recognize transactions based on prior transactions. So if you pay the rent to Ogonquit properties every month, next time the uh, the system pulls down a uh, transaction, a payment to Ogonquit properties is going to say, this should be rent, right? So um, it's going to do the accounting. And then you're going to have rules. It's going to say, hey, <clears throat> every time I see a check from Ogonquit or two Ogonquit properties, can I put it in rent? And you say, yeah. Just, all you have to do is click, yeah, that's a rule. <clears throat> Next time, it won't even sit there in the lobby it will be posted directly. So effectively, in the morning, once you, you've been doing it for a little bit and there is history, when you open your, your, your computer early in the morning, okay, you're about to have the first cup of coffee, 80% of your accounting has been done for that day. That is why it's going to take only <coughs> four to six hours, <coughs> excuse me, for an employee to do the accounting. So the second seminar, the second webinar, where we talk about connectivity, that, that's an important one. And we are going to go through how that is happening and what to do every day uh, regarding the downloading of transactions from the financials. Um, and then we are going to review the uh, revenue cycle, you know, how to sell, how to create clients, how to collect within QuickBooks. During the third webinar, we are going to touch on a very important um, uh, activity 
that I don't know how many of you do on a regular basis, and that is the reconciliation of your financial accounts. Uh, timely reconciliation of checking, savings, you know, all of those accounts uh, is critical in order to keep a, um, a controlled environment, okay? Uh, when, when, you know, when you have reconciled on a timely basis, and timely basis means that within five days of closing the month. So uh, when, you know, when February 28 rolls around, by March 5 or March 10 at the latest, you should have closed the month, done the reconciliations, and prepared your financial statements. And with QuickBooks, we're going to show you that the reconciliation, yet typically, you know, it takes... Uh, two or three hours and at least three aspirins, you know, in order to uh, get through with QuickBooks, automatically you will find that the, 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 the uh, reconciliation of your bank checking and so forth pretty much is going to take no time. Again, with artificial intelligence. So that also uh, is it's an important um, webinar. And again, remember, you cannot make it it's going to be recorded so you can go back and if you have any specific questions let us know we can we can meet 15 minutes one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one every friday and then um we will also uh during the uh the uh, third seminar we will be covering the um preparation of financial statements which are generated automatically and you will see the ability to look at the financial condition of your, your company and dig down to individual invoices. That's going to be during the third seminar. And finally, during the fourth seminar, we are going to be introducing uh, something that I don't know too many small businesses follow, and that is budgets. Budgets are also, the, uh, it's the second, if you wish, cornerstone for control. Uh, developing a budget following a budget and every month comparing actual versus budget gives you a sense of where you've been and where you're likely to be. Um, we develop for our clients something that we call the six week um, rolling cash flow. And this is a very important tool for many because the typical situation where you say, I've been selling great, my sales are up, everything looked so good, and I don't have cash for next week's payroll. Where did the, the cash go? And, and many times what happens is that the accounting system has not been followed or has not been kept up to date. In other words, there is no control. Well, with monthly reconciliations and an annual budget, you will see that all of a sudden managing takes a totally different dimension. That's going to be the, the fourth and last webinar. Uh, and um, if there's any questions at this point, otherwise we'll jump right into the, um, the first uh, tour of uh, QuickBooks Online. So I would say if anybody has any questions, just unmute yourself and, and feel free to to just ask David whenever you have a question. That's probably right. the way to do it with the sized group. Okay, what we're gonna do, and this is, let me see, first we have to share here. Okay. Get rid of this. Okay, we're gonna go um, QuickBooks Online uh, gives us a um, drive test, a test drive, I'm sorry, a demo. And we're gonna be using the demo um, to, to go through and review uh, real time what QuickBooks Online looks like and how to navigate it. The, um, in order to reach a demo, you can very easily, you can go to my website, that's nosnik.com. That would be right here. Okay. So you can go to uh, nosnik.com, N-O-S-N-I-K.com, go to video tutorials and 
let me just get here. In the video tutorials, what I have done is I have put some uh, into it, the uh, software developer has put together an incredible library of very specific uh, videos addressing very specific issues like uh, banking credit cards, invoices, creating, emailing, et cetera, et cetera. I have put some of the important ones here in the website, but also you have a link to the full library of videos. So whether it's getting started, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they're all here. So, you know, you can again go to, um, let me get rid of this. You can go to nosnik.com, go to tutorials, and you can reach them all there. That's the easiest way. Um, also, uh, I have the um, test drive, the link to the test drive right here. And um, if you do not have right now QuickBooks Online, but you would like to get a feeling, you know, what is what does it look like? What does it feel like? And you want actually to run some examples real life, go here. And this is where we're going to be going. It's called the Craig's Design. We go here and we go to test drive right here. And that's going to land us to a, um, taking a little time. And here we are in an actual uh, application of QuickBooks Online. So this is what QuickBooks Online looks like. Okay. This is your portal. What we're going to be doing <clears throat> today in this webinar is we are going to be going through the menu, the workflow, and how to get to where you need to be from anywhere you might be. First, <clears throat> let me mention that QuickBooks is trying very, very hard to make this very user-friendly. And what they have done is when you land on the QuickBooks Online, your company, they have two um, options. One is what they call the business view. So the very same portal is being rearranged in, with language. The other one, by the way, is the accountant's portal. Supposedly, it's a little bit more sophisticated. It's used, supposedly using lingo that, you know, it's more technical. Here, they're trying to make it very simple language you know, how to business overview, banking, get paid and pay, payroll, et cetera. Um, I like much better the accountant view, and I think you will too, because it really is more specific, okay? It tells you this is sales, cash flow, expenses, projects. So it's more direct to what you want. This is the um, left-hand side menu. and this, this was from the beginning, QuickBooks had a workflow approach to accounting. And what that means is they divided activities that you would normally have in the management of a company. And you would say, okay, sales, you have sales, you have invoices, you have customers. With expenses, you have expenses and you have vendors, payroll, and then reports is where you go for your balance sheet, income statement, et cetera. Then you're gonna get some a little bit more advanced issues like mileage, taxes. We will cover those um, in, in future uh, webinars, but the key is basically how do you write checks and how do you record sales? Those are the two key cycles um, within QuickBooks. Banking, what they call banking, is the uh, place where every day 
the transactions that um, are being cleared through the bank are coming down to here, to this area, already downloaded. This is what happened. You know, these are the dates and you can organize them by dates, right? So it looks like here, uh, the bookkeeper, you know, has not been very busy. I mean, there's transactions going back to December, et cetera, et cetera. This is something we're gonna be looking at next uh, webinar, the second webinar. But you can see here that the checking account savings and the credit card have been connected to the, um, to the bank itself. And every night, transactions will be pulled and down. So here you are and all you have to do is, yep, accounting is gonna be match and that's it, that's all you do. Expenses. You have all the expenses that you have accounted for, you have the vendors. It's a whole list of vendors. Sales, again, the revenue cycle includes invoices. Those are the invoices that you have created. You have customers. One thing within QuickBooks Online is because of the technology, because the depth, in other words, you can drill down to individual transactions, the what's called the real estate, your screen, will provide you much more information than say your desktop person. The, if you are here, for instance, and you're looking at your customers, right? And you have a list of customers, all of your customers are here. And here you have the balance, what they owe you. Some nothing, right? QuickBooks Online has a third dimension. In other words, this is $239. That's what they owe you. But you can actually, going from here, you can see the full history of transactions with Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And the way you do it is you just click here. And here, by clicking, you go to the next level. Again, the same screen, but now you are in the next level. And here, it tells you what's happened. It all started, and again, this is the story, you know, being told about Amy's, your client. It all started back in November 28, when you sold them $205. And they paid you 105 December 23rd. You sold them to 39. There was a credit memo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the way down to January 14. Okay. Now, again, this is the second level. If you want to know what did they buy November 28, you click again and you drill down to the individual invoice. Uh, you know, the ability to go from the portal to the invoice, I mean, to, from the portal to sales, to all the clients, customers, to the individual invoice gives you so much power because you can be, um, I don't know, there is a new customer that comes to the tea shop and says, you know, I don't remember when was the last time I was here. All you have to do is you go to QuickBooks Online, you go to the customer, there it is, the full story. When they started, what they paid, how they paid. Well, the very sale, the very first sale to Amy's Bird Sanctuary was November 28th, and this is what they bought. So again, now the other the other thing is if you are anywhere in QuickBooks 
okay? And you're, you don't know how to get back to the portal. Remember, it's always, it always is easy. When, when in doubt, just go back to the dashboard. And there you are. And from here, you can navigate anywhere you want to go. You have on the left, your basic menu. You have the accountant's view. You have the business view. Now here, if you wanted to see a customer, if you wanted to see an invoice, you would go here. That's why I don't like it as much. It, the description is not as specific. You know, it's kind of, well, do I want to get paid? Do I want to pay? It's a payroll. You can always, when in doubt, just click. And here, it opens up the next level. Invoices, etc., customers, which you can always look here. Within the dashboard, we've seen that you have the accountant's dashboard, you have the business view. Also, you have the how to get things done. By the way, I never use this uh, portal. I always go to the left margin and that gets me directly. But one thing to remember, QuickBooks Online, wherever you're going, whatever you wanna do, you can get there in less than three, three, in three or less clicks. So you should be able to get to invoices or checks or financial statements in one, two or three clicks from wherever you are. And there's always more than one way to get to where you're going. And that's where QuickBooks Online is very intuitive. Like how, if I'm ready to do the uh, reconciliation, for instance, of banks, how would I get, I forget how to get to reconciliation. Well, there is one way, if you remember, and you go here, this will allow you to see your settings, who's using it, all kinds of lists, and we'll go over all of this. So, you know, don't, don't be overwhelmed. Okay, but within the tools, there's reconciliation. So I can get to the reconciliation this way. I click, okay, this, is, this would be the first time we do this. Okay, but let's say that I'm here. This is what the reconciliation looks like. And you know, we'll, we'll go over later, but I got there from here, you know, the most direct way. Another way would be, well, there's a chart of accounts. What I want to reconcile is my checking account. So I go to my checking account. This is what the checking register, the check register looks like, right? If I'm there and I say, well, I want to reconcile here, you can get to the reconciliation from the checking account, same place, two different ways. So. There's always different ways. Just remember it's intuitive so you can get there. And the beauty is that you can navigate back and forth. If I'm in the reconciliation, I have questions. I wanna go straight to the register. I can do it here. Okay. Let me see, let me get rid of this call. Very good. Okay, then what I wanna do is again, you have the left margin. By the time we're done with four um, webinars, you know, you'll be able to see, you know, how to use and function every single one of them. Okay. What we're gonna do next is we are going to cover the expense writing checks cycle. 
whenever you're ready to do a new posting, be it a check, be it a deposit, be it a credit memo, whatever it is that you're going to do, you can go to this button, new. New is an action button. So you click new and it tells you what you can do. Again, remember QuickBooks Online follows the um, uh, workflow. You can have a customer's workflow, vendors. This is customers. This is the sale, the clients, the, uh, the product, etc. Vendors is the expense, is the checks. Employees, payroll, and other. So if we are going to be posting an expense, we're going to be going to vendors. And you can have expense, write a check, put a bill, pay bills, etc. Again, the cycle follows. Now, let me show you here. Um, you have, first of all, what's the difference between expense, bill, and check? If you want to if you get a bill, an invoice, okay, from a vendor, whoops, it's, what it's trying to do is it's trying to log in my own QuickBooks, not the uh, test drive. So let me go back and see what's going on. Okay. I'm back. Again, we're going to do a new uh, expense. Let me see. We're going to do the bill first. The one thing with uh, QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, you are going to find that the, the uh, uh, user interface Again, it's very simple, it's very nice, it's very clean, a lot of uh, white spaces, but it looks very much like a check, like a bill, like the way you would normally write a check. And it's very intuitive. Vendor, we saw a list of vendors, right? So you can choose a vendor that you already have, right? These are vendors, you got the... Um, the uh, invoice from the telephone company, the system will automatically, you know, load the uh, information and it will give you what the last bill was. Obviously, if you're going to input the new one, you're going to change it. You, you can do it right there. You've got dates, you can change them. Very easy terms right here. So everything is very intuitive. Now, another great thing is that normally, if you want to add a new vendor, you don't have to go to the vendor section and add a new vendor. You can do it that way, but you can also do it from here. Let's say that you are going to create a new vendor, a vendor that you didn't have before. You do it from here. You just put add new, right? And you have the name, let's say that um, I'm sending you my first bill, right? So it's my accounting firm. Right? It's new, it's there. And if I want to, I can leave it just like this. Or if I want to, I can fill in, you know, the... Um, the address. Now, if I do this, let's say that, you know, it's accounting, right? The chart of accounts pops up, $90. This is just for the monthly, so it's going to be $80, right? That's it, it's due, well, today is February 10, 
it's to the 22nd, et cetera, et cetera. You can put a bill number if you want to. You fill it in and you can at the same time save it. That's it, just save. Save it and immediately schedule payment. So it will automatically pop up the day of the payment and will automatically create a check. This is where artificial intelligence gives you the ability to do two, three, four things at the same time. So you would do it, or you just save it and you close, or you can save it and send it to the vendor or, you know, the, the save and send I use typically with clients because I wanna send them in, an invoice that I just created. We'll see that when we go through the revenue cycle. Here, typically what you would do is save and schedule payment right? And again, being the first one, the, the time they're using this, this will not happen every time you do it. But this is telling us and how you're going to pay, you're going to pay by, you know, credit card, you're going to pay with check. So we can actually load the uh, transaction, the bill, and schedule payment or we can just load the transaction and save it. And then we'll go back and pay it later. Um, let's see. I think it's taking a little too long. Well, let me go back then. the test drive. What we were doing is new, create a bill. Let me see, I don't think it's gonna save it, no. Because remember, it's, this is just a, uh, A demo, so it's not going to save anything once we leave. This is Bessie, the bookkeeper. She's charging seventy-five dollars. We're going to do the same thing today. It's going to be paid on the twenty-fifth, but this time instead of scheduling payment, I'm just going to save and close. Okay, that was a bill. Now I can. If I decide that I'm, I'm not going to schedule payment in the future, I don't want to just put up the bill to be paid later. But rather, what I want to do is I want to write a check right now. I got an invoice. Let's say I get a check. In other words, I don't create bills. I don't go on a cruel basis, but rather I'm, I've got a bunch of invoices that I'm going to write checks. Here is the check. Looks very much like the bill, but it's a check. It knows that the next check is 71. If that's not correct, then we just have to. I already wrote 71 manually, let's say. There is 72. And uh, let's say that I'm gonna pay, well, Bessie, okay? Now, what's gonna happen in the case of Bessie is gonna say, hey, listen, you've got a bill already for Bessie. Is this the one you want to pay? You can say, no, no, it's going to be something else. Or you can go to, let's say I'm going to pay the phone, okay? I don't have, I haven't set up the bill for the phone. I'm going to pay it right now, and I'm going to account for it right now. So here is the check, check 72. It's going to be for the, um, for the telephone, right? And I'm going to put here, telephone. I already have it. It's in the chart of accounts, goes into telephone. I'm gonna pay $98 with 75 cents. It's not billable, there is no tax, there is no customer, this is just for the office, okay? Normally, there's two things I can do. I can save it 
and then print it later, you know, like with many checks, or I can print it right now, okay? Or if I paid already with a bill pay, an automatic bill pay from say Bank of America, but I just want to record it here, I can do it to right and say just save. But another thing that I can do that it's it, it's I think it's an incredible feature of QuickBooks Online is the fact that I can attach to my online to my virtual uh, accounting system. I can attach the actual uh, invoice, so I don't have to file the invoice somewhere else. I can attach it right now. So what I do is if I get an invoice digitally, I download it right into my, my computer, and then I'm going to upload it here. If I got it in the mail, I scan it, put it in my computer and say, this is Cal. So what I do is here in the attachments, I double click, right? And I go to my computer and I have already a sample invoice. That's the invoice that I received in the mail, right? So I just click it, I upload it. And probably it's not letting me, well, yeah, it did. Okay. Some of the capabilities are not functioning because it's a uh, demo. And then once I get rid of it, it, you know, it disappears. But this, it did let me, here is the simple invoice. I just uploaded it. So if I go back, if someday, um, you know, I'm there in the uh, library, Dave, and somebody says, didn't you pay? Yeah, I did pay. So, you know, you go to, um, to checks, you go down to the specific check, and then you can actually click, right? And there it is, the invoice that I paid, right? So that provides me with documentation right there with the check. So not only do I know that I paid it, I've got the, uh, the documentation. And then all I have to do is save and close. Okay. And again, somebody asks me and says, uh, did you pay the, the phone? Well, again, if I'm here in the portal, Somebody's asking me, I have my QuickBooks online open and says, did you pay? Uh, and by the way, you can access from your phone, smartphone, from an iPad. So if you were, again, I don't know, somewhere uh, at the beach, somewhere else, and somebody says, did you, did you remember to pay? You know, you can go right into the system, right? And then you would say, okay, how do I find that, um, that receipt? Well, you can go through uh, vendors, right? Expenses, vendors, identify who's the vendor. It's Cal phone, right? So there's the vendor. And then here, it shows me the activity and there it is the check. Okay, so I click, there is the check, but are you sure it was the right bill? Well, let me see. And there it is. Okay, I had, you know, a quite, and I just, by the way, this is a transaction that we just, uh, uh, this is not one that was prepared. This is one that we just, you know, did. and do it, you know, feel free to go to the, uh, to the demo, you know, try this, go here. Remember, you cannot go wrong. I mean, it's a demo, it's gonna disappear. Don't worry, for some reason you put in there information that's personal, it disappears. <clears throat> the minute you, you uh, log out of it, it's gone. But it's a good exercise. You know, how does this work? What does it look like? Go to the dashboard, I'm back there. So now we see, you know, how we had a bill, again, new. We could, if we have an expense, if we got an invoice, we have ways to put a bill, put a check, or if I'm not gonna write a check, it's not a bill that I'm gonna pay in the future, but rather, say that I just uh, bought something with, uh, with a credit card and I wanna record it in the system, okay? Then I go to expense. A again, they're all the same, 
check, you're going to write a check. Bill, you're going to pay the bill down the road. Expense, it's already paid. You don't have to write a check, but you want to record it. So you go, it's expense. <clears throat> Again, you know, you want to record, <coughs> uh, you know, the same thing, the same uh, vendor will appear <coughs> in the expense check, et cetera. And here you say, how are you gonna pay for it? Or how did you pay? For it? Well, I already wrote your check, but I didn't do it through QuickBooks and it was check 71. So you can record it, even though you're not going to print it, right? Or you say, I paid it with MasterCard and I want to record it. It's already paid, there is no reference, or if there is a, any reference that you wanna put in there, right? Payment method, you can put it right here if you want to, or not in this case. This is the method, this is the actual account, the category. This is not critical, this is critical. And then, you know, what did you do? Let's say that we, we have another vendor, um, computers by Jenny. Uh, I bought a, um, an iPad. Right, so I paid to Jenny and I don't know if they have computers, yeah, computer repair. It was $35 and then I can describe it, um, replace the, um, the CR in the POU by TRC. Okay. And then if you happen to have a um, an invoice, just click, get it, upload it. It's there. There you are. You have it all accounted for, right? And this was... February 10. Now, just a peek, we're gonna be looking at financial statements on the road, but I saved it, right? So if I was to get my, I go to reports, right? And I go to the income statement for February, January and February 10, okay? And I was to look at, um, repairs, right? First of all, legal and professional, that's the bookkeeping, okay? This is something else. This is someone else. It was not the 75 that we had the bookkeeping. Computer repairs, that's the one we just uh, booked. It's a 35. Computers by Jenny, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. And then if I want to see more what the expense was, I can go down to the to the specifics where we started. Okay. It's immediate. Your your financial statements are updated immediately, and you have them available for you. Again, this gets you through. Um, Expense, check, bill. They're all the same, except the way it's paid. This will be paid in the future, scheduled for the future. This, you're paying it now. You want to either print the check or just record the check that you are going to be maybe paying with, with an automatic bill payment system. And expense, it's already paid, but I want to record it. Okay? Then you're gonna pay, you're gonna write checks. Well, we saw how to write a check from an invoice that has not been recorded, has not been accrued for it, has not been put in as a bill or an expense. So what we're gonna do is we, we can pay bills two ways, okay? One, just write a check, pay it, or 
you can pay for a bill that's already in the system. And that's where you go to pay bills. So the pay bill is going to tell you, these are all the bills that you have uh, recorded that have not been paid. And this is the, 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 the due date. And it's going to highlight anything that's past due. OK, so let's say that um, hopefully you will never experience a cash crunch, but it's unlikely. Uh, whenever you're in a cash crunch, whenever cash is very short, it's when you say, OK, how much do I have and who am I going to pay? This is the map. This tells you now nah, the insurance agency can. Well, no, really can't wait. That, that's I, I got to pay now. Um, Robertson, no, no, they, they, they can wait. So, OK, so I'm going to put two hundred and forty one dollars here. OK, so I'm going to make a payment here. And you can pay less. Let's say that I'm going to give him one hundred and fifty dollars. OK. I'm also going to, uh, you know, they've PHE is the California utility. So they've said that I better pay now. So, okay, eight, six, I'm gonna pay it all, okay? Now, what I'm doing here is I'm paying the bills that are outstanding, okay? Um, you know, Bessie and Diego and so forth, that, that I'm gonna pay later. So this is what I wanna do. This is the way I look at all the bills. This is the way I plan to pay the ones I wanna pay. Schedule payment online, if that's the way we're going to do it. I don't know. It's going to be the same delay, probably. Well, let's see. No, not even. It's not letting us because we don't have the actual. OK, so here we go. Back to the test drive. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to pay the bills. New pay bills. It's going to show us what we owe. And as you see, we don't have the one we entered before, um, the, the bookkeeper, because this is a brand new demo. Once we logged out, it disappears. So again, we can decide to pay who we're going to pay. We say you can pay online or you can just write a check, okay? Save and close. Now, another way that you can schedule payments or you can actually pay, I'm sorry, this says payment account, MasterCard checking. So we're gonna make checks, right? We're gonna pay $150, 150, 150 to the insurance. We're gonna pay 86.44. And we don't want to pay you online. What we're going to do is we're going to save and print. Now, I'm not going to do it right now because it doesn't have a printer since it's the demo. But normally, you would set up your printer. You would be ready. All you have to do is save and print, print, and your checks would be printed. You can mail them. Or you can just save, and then you print later on a bulk basis. Okay. Very good. Another way to um, let's see. another way to pay is you don't have to do it on a bulk basis. What you can do is you can go. Uh, excuse me. Trying to get rid of it. Okay. Another way you can pay is go straight and pay uh, with your check, right? Write a check. So we go new, we write a check, and we write it to the insurance company, right? Instead of going bulk with many, we just go straight, and it says, this is how much you owe. And again, remember, it's 9123 because it's what's left from what we already paid. So you say... Yeah, I want to pay them again because it recognizes the vendor. It knows there is a, a balance outstanding and you say, yeah, add it. Or 
you can ignore it and pay something else. But if you add it, there it is, ready to go. All you have to do is choose, you know, how you're going to pay it. You're going to close it. You're going to go a new one, send it, etc. Okay. So this is a bill payment. You have the payment, save and close. So you can see that by adding artificial intelligence, which is the understanding of the history, what has happened, relating bills to checks, relating bills to vendors in the expense check writing cycle, QuickBooks will reduce the time necessary drastically. Now you can see here that the relationship of the bookkeeper to the client, right? Whenever you have the capability of sharing the books, all of a sudden you don't need the bookkeeper to come pick up the documents, the checks, the receipts, go to his office, process them, send you a trial balance for you to approve, send you the statements. This, I think it was six or eight years ago when we said, you know what, it's easier. What was happening is the client was putting together all that information, <laughs> all those invoices, and then we would pick them up. They were writing the checks. Well, why not train the client to use QuickBooks to write checks, to put the, 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 the bills, to decide what's going to be paid? We can then have access to what they're doing. We can see whether or not the categories, the accounts that were used were the proper ones, whether it was the proper time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, he who makes the decision, who writes the check, is the one who's doing the posting, is the one closest to the transaction, posts, and then we, the accountant from the outside, look at it um, just to supervise, to say, yep, that looks good, that looks quality. Once a month, we make sure that the reconciliations are done properly, that they're not too, outstand too many outstanding unexplained items, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. By the, tenth, by, by the tenth day after the close of the month, you have great um, financial statements that will really tell you what happened during the month, during the quarter, during the year, okay? Now, we've gone through the expense check writing cycle. And I think we're right on time. I think it should be about 45 minutes thereabouts. Um, that's what we wanted to accomplish uh, for this webinar. Again, remember in two weeks, we're gonna go through the sales. And by the time we're done with four webinars, you will be able to understand the capabilities. Now, we're not, these webinars are not necessarily teaching you details of how to and where to. We're trying to show you the capabilities so that you know what to expect from the system. How to do it, two ways. I mean, there, there's many classes, but what I would recommend is to go to the, um, uh, to the tutorials, the ones prepared by Intuit. And again, you can access them easily by going to nosnik.com video and tutorials, and you will have the full library. And if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be more than happy to talk about it on Fridays. You decide when makes sense for you. We, you know, we can devote 15 minutes to uh, any individual. So that's what uh, I have for today for this webinar. Any questions, any comments? Mike, uh, you said you wanted to, to, to be able to maybe get some pointers. Did you get any? Is there anything new that you didn't know or anything that you think will help or something that you're doing that it's even better than uh, what we uh, reviewed today? Um, well, I, you know, I, I, it's funny as so, so I have a bookkeeper and, and uh, I have two companies actually. So I have two QuickBooks accounts. 
and um, I navigate all of it, but I've always been afraid to touch anything in there because the bookkeeper enters it and we, we do some complicated things. You know, we have uh, do twos between the two businesses in case there's something that needs to be, you know, transferred sure. from one business to another. So, um, you know, I, I, I've, we started in the, uh, the disc version, not the online version. And which was, I think was a little bit more complicated and a little bit more cumbersome. So I've always been afraid I was going to break something, but as we've transitioned to the online version, it, it's kind of, like you said, it's very intuitive. It's very easy. It's very automated. And I've realized that it's something that, you know, almost anybody can do. So I'm sort of trying to learn a couple of things just so I can, you know, at this point, you know, I, I do what you, exactly what you said. And I drop off my invoices to the bookkeeper, have him, her pick them up. And, and I know that I can do all that. I just sort of needed a couple pointers to sort of, uh, to sort of get me on my way, I guess. <laughs> but just tell uh, so, the bookkeeper that you're going to do it, you're going to break it, and she's going to have to find it and fix it. Yeah, that that's, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, although there are some things like, uh, you know, if I'm doing an invoice, uh, I do need to figure out how to maybe do a split invoice in case it's, uh, you know, something that's being billed that needs to be paid from both companies evenly or something like it's that. It's very simple. It's, it's really, really very simple. I yeah. mean, what you're saying, I mean, the do tos and do froms, uh, you you have, that's, that's great. And, and what, you, you must have a very good bookkeeper because if she installed in you the discipline to have do tos and do froms, and I know this is very technical, okay. And at the end of the month, what you have to do is reconcile that the do to from one company is identical to the do from from the other, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and and yeah, I know that technically you're doing double accounting, but you have two different companies, and each has to know what, where, and when. So, but it's it's really fairly simple. What I would so you're you're using QuickBooks online, and yep. the, your bookkeeper is is doing is, is using the same ver I mean the same QuickBooks online, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, she should be able to teach you how to how to do a split transaction. In your check, you have many lines, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that you have a hundred dollars, fifty dollars is for uh, flour and fifty dollars is we paid for uh, whatever the service for the other side for the um for the market right mm -hmm. so what you do is you put in their expense flour and then the other one is due from the market right mm -hmm. there that's your split and then just just make sure that at the same time you open the market and say you know debit the service that was paid for by the pizza yeah yeah no it's I, I i really think that i would i would be a little bit more daring because mm -hmm. i think that you want to and i i think that by getting a little bit more involved by the way what we do is we create an account that's in the balance sheet in the other assets that is called ask my accountant okay and whenever you the uh, quote unquote in in-house bookkeeper are doing something and you're not quite sure what account it should go to. You put it in as my accountant, my office, when they look at the individual uh, application, the individual client, the first thing we do is we go to the ask my accountant to see what accounts need to be researched. In other words, where did my client have this week questions? And that's an incredible effective way of communicating. So, Suggest that to the bookkeeper. I'm sure they will. They will welcome that. Have, have they ever suggested that, or not at all? Um, uh, they've shown me some things. Uh, I think uh, there was always a. a I, I I know I haven't really suggested it because I, I was always kind of afraid to sort of take over that uh and and break something but you know now that i've realized that you know i think i need to do a little bit more research on my own as well um so that i have uh you know just the training wheels enough to 
to do it on my own. Um, uh, just for those complicated things, because they come up very often um, between the two companies. So, and remember, uh, one of the one of the beauties of uh, QuickBooks Online is the fact that it's very easy to fix mistakes. It really is. You know, once you yeah. find them, it's very simple to to fix them. So, very good, excellent. David, um, you said that you were going to. Uh, to have the resources of the consortium. They have um, specific applications that they share with you for, for libraries? Well, um, the um, one of the other nonprofit libraries, uh, we wanted to look at their chart of accounts and, um, and uh, borrow from that. Um, so what I'm trying to do is set up some accounting that's kind of in parallel with our accountant. And our accountant uh, recently had double bypass surgery, so uh, I kind of need to find out and uh, have a better idea what's going on. Who's, who's your accountant? Is it Tony? Uh, Tony York? Yeah, yeah, York Associates. Yeah. Wow. He had he had, really. Wow. Yeah, he uh, back in December said that oh uh, he's going to go in and have a stint to uh, put in, and uh, and uh, the next day he was in surgery for double bypass surgery, and to make it compl more difficult for him he got covid while he was in there oh god yeah so he's having a tough time so uh, but i so i really need to have a, a solid look at what's going on here listen and, um, if i can help i mean you're a non-for-profit and i can always write off my time so <laughs> please reach out i'll be happy to okay all right yeah so thank you for that offer that's great um yeah so um i look forward to uh, the other sessions um, and uh, the um, the layout of the uh, QuickBooks Online is similar to the layout of uh, uh, WordPress. It's that kind of standard menu on the side, so it's very helpful. And to see that there's a workflow, yeah. I think that's great. What I'm going to do, uh, Dave, is I'm going to look for and see if I can find a library application of on, of QuickBooks Online, um, and I'll I'll bring it uh, next time. You know, right, briefly, better. just share it with you see if I can find something, maybe that will help you. Yeah, our situation is a little different from the other small businesses in town, and I don't want to chew oh, up totally. too much time. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, well, well, thank you very much. It's a great presentation. So, and I have several uh, non-for-profits um, as clients. So, and I use QuickBooks Online and it's, it's, it's great. It's, it, it adapts to it. And I think for the, for the library, I think it's gonna help a lot. I, I think so too, yep. Great. Very good. Kevin, anything specific to your condominium that? Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the quick question I had was, uh, you know, I, can, I do see that there are some, you know, benefits and features to, you know, going from the desktop version to QuickBooks Online, particularly from the monitoring and the bookkeeping services. But, um, other than uh, being able to, you know, connect to your your banking accounts to have the you know the automatic updates from you know downloads from your bank statements, um, can you also utilize you know an Excel spreadsheet that's downloaded from the bank or from yes. your credit card and up and upload the entire spreadsheet? Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and especially now that uh, banks are requiring two and three step uh, protection. It's very hard to connect QuickBooks when you have that type of protection because you cannot give it <clears throat> two or three, you know, when they say- Sure, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so what you do is you download from the bank in what's called a CSV, not Excel, but CSV, you know, the uh, comma yep. delimited. Yep. And then you you map it the uh, the fields is very very easy, and then you upload it and within thirty seconds, you have accomplished exactly the same thing. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Many of my clients we do it that way because we cannot do it overnight. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and and you know, conversion from a desktop to uh, uh, online is very simple. You know, it takes, I mean, you can actually take your, your desktop, convert it to online and have the whole history of your desktop in the online. 
so you don't lose anything. Yeah. Okay. Can you okay. if you if you if you were to do you know you know a can you can you append years? So let's say you wanted to do you know the current year, and then you want to go back just to get started, and then you want to go back and and add you know twenty and twenty one, or I should say nineteen and twenty. You know, is that easy to append like that? The online version. But you have to start from the beginning. You got to pick a you got to pick a starting point. That's the problem. Well, yeah, but why would you go back? In other words, if I was to convert, I convert from day one, two thousand and eight. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Is your really your only choice to convert from day one? Yeah, yeah. Did you want to do it differently? Did you did you no, want just, just I just want to know what the options are because you know we've never had online. So I just didn't know if you had to, if you had to start from the beginning or can you you know, you know can you say, all right, I'm just gonna do online from you know this point forward. You can. You can. And the way to do it is basically you would you would download the information you want. And then upload it instead of doing this the, the whole thing. But I would I recommend see. doing everything just because the worst thing is you never look at it. You know what I mean? But you have it there. Um, why would you if, if you were to considering, for instance, going online and let's say that you have 12 years worth of data in your desktop, right? Why would you not want everything going online and just selected years? Uh, the only the only question would be, you know, making that conversion, and then you know, and then you have issues with with the online version. Only having to deal with the current year is a heck of a lot easier than you know something going wrong when the whole you know when everything's been uploaded. That's you know, to me it'd be a test, and I wouldn't you know I wouldn't I wouldn't commit to you know going oh, solely I online, but yeah. Oh, no, no, fine. No, no. Yeah. No, the answer is, yeah, you can upload and, upload and start from whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Now, you say, I just would like it to be a test. Now, if the test is positive, it would be harder then to bring the history. You know what I True, mean? But I could, probably delete, I could probably delete the account and then reestablish it. Right? Not a problem. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Again, um, if if it makes sense, you know, please let us know. Fridays is open. Just you know, give me a heads up days before so we can accommodate. Uh, it's fifteen minutes. Otherwise, um, I'll see you guys a week from Thursday. And David, I'll I'll um, I'll bring the uh, the library version if I find one. Okay. okay very you. good. Thank you. Okay. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you. I, I was saying anything else. Thank you, David. No. Yeah. I, if Thank you can. You. Send me the, um, oh, Kevin, did you have something? Okay. I was going to say, David, if you can just send me the specific topics for weeks two, three, and four, then I will um, start to promote that in the member newsletter, put the whole thing together. And when do you think we're going to have this? Have we cleared up the uh, YouTube or not yet? Uh, not yet, but we can. I'm saving it in Zoom in the cloud, and then we can transfer the files over. Can you send me a copy? Is that, or can I yes, ask? Okay. Yep. Let me know yep, how to absolutely. do that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you a link, and then you just send it. Then you'll be able to put it on your computer. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, David. Thanks. Well, thanks it was a pleasure. Nice meeting you all. Have a great week. Bye.